Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Turn with me, please, to Luke chapter 18, 18th and 19th verses. A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good self save one that is God. God is good. He's absolute good. He's absolutely good. And I've learned so much about this from Gloria. Because the word of the Lord came to Gloria in 1998 and said, I want you to preach the goodness of God without reservation and pay no attention to the rebuke of men. That's not quite the wording, but you don't pay any attention to what they say and come up, like, well, like that man did me. And like more than one did Brother Hagin that way. And just get a hold of him and say, listen, he, he just needs to stop saying that God is a good God stuff. Well, I've never known him any other way. So, let's go to the book of Genesis. That's a good place to start, isn't it? God has never created anything that was bad because He is so good. Never. He's never created anything that was bad. In the beginning, well, that's a good place to start. God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw the light, and it was good. God divided the light from the darkness, and He called the light day, and the darkness He called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day, and God said, let there be a firmament, 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 Firm my men. Let it be <laughs> in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called it heaven. And the other he called um, uh, the evening and morning of the second day. And God said, Let the waters do what it is. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And then he said, God saw that it was good. Well, certainly it was. He create, he's good, and he create, what he creates is good. And you come down to the 12th verse, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed for his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day, over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. Well, that's the fourth time He said that. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth upon the firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature and that moves and with waters he brought it abundantly after their kind, after every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the earth, and so forth, the 25th verse. And God saw that it was good. Now, wait a minute. Something's not good. The second chapter 
of Genesis. Well, okay. And the ninth, let's see the, let's see the ninth verse. Out of the ground made the Lord grow every tree, it pleasant in the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it, to, to water the garden and from there it was parted and became into four heads. And the name of the first was, and this was, a, and the gold was good. And the Lord took the man in the 15th verse and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it, to keep it, or actually to guard it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree thou mayest eat freely and so forth. And in the 18th verse, and God, the Lord God said, oh, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. And out of the ground the Lord formed and so forth. And so what did he do? The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam must have said, this is good. <laughs> Yeehaw, this is good. Look at her. Whoa. Don't you know she was gorgeous? Absolute a wonder in his eyes. This is good. What about the devil? Well, what about him? Well, you said he's never created anything bad. He didn't. He didn't. <clears throat> Ezekiel Chapter 28, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ezekiel 28. Verse 1, the word of the Lord came again unto me saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, the prince, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man. Underline that if you haven't already. Thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Thy wisdom and thine understanding thou hast gotten with it. You've gotten riches and has gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. Thy, thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of your riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon you and the terrible of the nations and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom, and they shall defile your brightness. They shall bring you down to the pit, and you shall die in the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, but thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came, his son of man, 
take up a lamentation uh, uh, upon the king. That was the prince. Here's the king of Tyrus. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now listen, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardis, topaz, the diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and their pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. This is a created being. Thou art the anointed cherub that covers. This is an anointed angel. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou hast, wast perfect in the ways, thy ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in thee. And the 16th verse, he said, I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty. Thou hast corrupted the, your wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee, and all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror and never shall you be any more. Never. Now, Isaiah chapter 14. Wouldn't it be something if the, if the rapture just occurred right now? The catching away of the church? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just get out of here. <laughs> All right. Isaiah chapter 14, the ninth, <laughs> the ninth verse. Hell from beneath is moved for, to, for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also... Look now, art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vile, the worm is spread unto thee, the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from the morning? How art, O Lucifer, how art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning. Actually, that word, Lucifer, is translated day star. Lucifer, day star. Some translations don't even use his name. Just son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, he said it, 
I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be clouds. I will be like the most high, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. And they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth so to tremble, that did make shake kingdoms, that the world made the world a wilderness? There's a lot of revelation in there. If you just look for it. I'm surprised that this isn't more discussed. Recently, I was, I was going into some of this and, and the pastor came to me and, and, and said, uh, I didn't know that. I've never heard that talk. Now think about it. Was the earth flooded? Yes. Water was upon the face of the deep. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. There's eons of time between verse 1 and verse 2. Now, I mean, you pray, you can do what you want to with this. But it, it's, it's obvious to me that, that Lucifer was on the earth. He was here. And the scripture said, he made the nations a wilderness. He was so beautiful and so gorgeous. He was, now the Lord spoke this into my heart one time, the word ebony. It was just more, more beautiful than you could imagine. And the beauty got the best of it. He had no tempter. Iniquity was found in him. He's doomed. He said, I will be like the Most High. We said we'll be like the Most High. We got born again. <laughs> but he's a created being. And was cast down from that place. Now, it's obvious to the, to, the, to the Bible student, a student that is honest and takes the time to study it. It is obvious because the fossil record doesn't lie. Dinosaurs were here. Um, there, those, those things, it doesn't lie. Now the earth was recreated in six days. That's obvious also. Now we, and it's very plainly said, replenish the earth. Who is the Neanderthal man? They say, well, it's a missing link. Yes, it's missing. It never was there. I'm totally convinced. I spent time listening to Brother Hagen talk about this and, and, and visited together Little, not as much as I would have liked to have had, but in studying it and visited with other people about this, 
There was a whole race of people here. And all of them followed Lucifer. Jesus is called the morning star. Huh? Keith, I'm also, because of those names, Jesus is called the bright and morning star. His name was morning star. I'm completely convinced that he was Jesus' personal angel. And he was, he was the most beautiful and the most powerful of his kind, the anointed cherub. Doesn't say that about the other two, the other two archangels, Michael or Gabriel. If it does, I don't, I don't know about it. But, but he was anointed. That's a special thing. His kingdom here on this earth and the apostle Paul told us in the book of Ephesians, the rank and file of the kingdom of darkness, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and wicked spirits in the heavenlies. Those wicked spirits in the heavenlies being the highest of all those devils. Now I just, I've spent a lot of time, I'm not just a little bit of time thinking and praying and praying in the spirit about that. Ooh, I got that again. <laughs> about the catching away of the church. Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, these two subjects go together well, don't they? That those are the so-called Neanderthal men. They were men and women. The highest in intelligence, the highest they were, not, they were not stupid. And this goofy stuff that you see about, oh, you know, that's just made up. You don't even know, you don't know that they lived in caves and stuff like that. I doubt that seriously. There were kings and princes and I am convinced that those are those wicked spirits in the heavenlies. And that's the reason they work in the political That's the reason people go to Washington, D.C. and just lose their minds. Do and say things they'd swear they would never do. Because you don't, you, don't, you don't know anything about coming up against a devil like that. Amen. Anyway, that's enough about him. He's a zero. Jesus stripped him and pulled his teeth. Glory to God. And he goes about as a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. Uh, he's just a liar. Jesus said it. He comes but for to steal. Because he doesn't have anything. He has to steal it. He doesn't own anything. He has to steal it. What is he after? Jesus said that he comes immediately to steal the word. If he can steal the word, then he can kill. And then he can, then he can destroy. But don't let him have it. Amen. And the more you know the goodness of God, the more you know the badness of the devil. How do you have a vision for your future when you just need to get through today? When the dreams you once had seem out of reach, is there a way to rebuild? The Bible says that God has only good plans for you, that His goodness and mercy are coming after you. It's when you begin to understand His goodness that you can begin to receive it. Get the Goodness of God MP3 series by Gloria Copeland and grow your capacity to see the love, prosperity, healing, all the good things of God in your life. God is good. 
There's not anything that is more faith building than to know the Father and to know His goodness. When it seems like the world around you is being torn apart, you can remain firm in hope. Become a living, walking example of the love that God has poured out to mankind. As you join your faith in God's promises with steadfastness to stand on His Word, there's nothing that can stop His blessing from taking over your life. Order your free copy of The Goodness of God MP3 series by Gloria Copeland. The motivation of God's heart is His love for you. Receive all the benefits that God desires to pour out on you through His goodness. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225-787-310. Free offer good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. This week of broadcast comes from Brother Copeland's teaching at the Branson Victory Campaign. And when you know the truth about God's goodness, you cannot be misled by some man's opinion. And that's why our product offer this week is so important. It's a series by Gloria Copeland on the goodness of God. And if you haven't requested your free copy, do it today. And the subject of the goodness of God is the answer to many of the challenges that are going on in the current events around the world today. And you can use this teaching to prepare yourself and maintain your place of victory. And when you let the Word of God strengthen your faith and equip you to live consistently in the goodness of God, it'll change your life. And we know God's goodness is available to every believer, yet not all are experiencing His goodness throughout their lives. And in this series, you're going to learn from Gloria Copeland how strongly God desires to provide and demonstrate His love to you. She goes through Scripture by Scripture, revealing the heart of the Father. And as you seek Him and his word, you'll find his plan and place of provision for you and position yourself to be a receiver of his goodness. To request or download your free copy, just go to kcm.org. And Brother Copeland calls KCM's website your personal study center. And kcm.org is a great resource for word-based teaching. You can search and study by topic. You can share videos, prayers, testimonies, magazine articles. You can share them with your family, with your friends. You can download the broadcast study notes and use them to teach a small group. You can start your day in the Word of God. Read KCM's very popular daily devotional from faith to faith. It's free online or you you can have it delivered directly to your email every day. KCM.org is available to you 24-7 to help you build your faith. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Go to kcm.org.uk to receive free teaching resources such as a digital download of today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. You can download it straight to your computer or mobile device. Continue to grow in your faith in God and live in the wisdom of His Word. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.